Today I'd like to share the results of a compost tea trial we recently completed thanks to support from the, a USDA specialty crop block grant. Compost tea and extract may have potential as a way to reduce chemical inputs by improving soil biology and a lot of work has already been done um, on field crops such as corn and soybeans showing a very nice benefit through the use of compost tea. In this pilot trial, we wanted to see if we could quantify some benefits uh, on vegetable crops. So let me start by showing you a, um, this, this is the kind of the overall layout of our small test plots. We ran five different vegetable crops what you're seeing now is the control group. This is just about two weeks uh, after emergence. And in the upper Midwest, where this trial was performed, we had a very difficult spring this year with complete drought from mid-May through mid-July, and also some very hot days and uh, below freezing temperatures late into the spring. Nonetheless, the, since, all of the, since the two test plots and the control were all planted under the same conditions, uh, we thought we could get some good results. Before running this trial, we ran some labs on the soil biology to confirm that we were running this test in average soil. And indeed, that was the case. We didn't have uh, too much organic matter. It was less than 3%, so that could be considered a normal soil. And we didn't have high uh, levels of any of the nutrients, so just a, an average soil. We also ran labs on two different composts that we were considering using to be sure that we understood what we had in terms of the compost. If we look then at next at the, uh, the test plots about four weeks after emergence, um, at, at this point in time we had done one spray of compost tea on that trial arm. And of course the only intervention in the compost extract arm was we we included compost extract in furrow at the time of planting. Now, two weeks after emergence, we really couldn't see any difference between the test plots. Now, here we are at four weeks trying to find some indications of whether there were any differences. And one way we thought we might look at this would be to measure the plant heights on the beets and the carrots. Perhaps we saw a directional improvement on the compost tea uh, trial arm, but we really couldn't confirm that. The three test plots looked very similar. Uh, what you're looking at here is the trial arm one, which is the compost tea, and then following this you'll see the compost extract trial arm. One thing we did notice at, at this point was we were starting to get some damage uh, from Japanese beetles. And green beans are one of their favorite plants and they can be a real problem in our area. We didn't use any interventions, uh, or any kind of pesticide, and wanted to see if there might be any difference in yield on the beans between the different uh, trial arms and the control. And indeed, we did see an increase on the bean leg, um, and that may have been uh, due to some type of pest resistance, although that's, that's just a guess uh, at this point. So let's take a look at the, uh, the yield results. <clears throat> this is a simple table that shows the control group on the left, the compost tea group in the middle, and the compost extract group on the right. 
and then the five different plant types. In, in the trial arms, we have the total weight and also the percentage of that weight versus control. So anything over 100 would be a positive increase and both on total and edible weights. So what you can see here is that we did see directionally an increase uh, on, on edible weight in the, con in the trial arm one versus control on all five plant types. Now, this was a pilot trial and no statistics uh, were able to be run, but directionally this is really a positive result. And remember, I, I mentioned uh, about beans uh, just a minute ago, so you can see that, let's say, more than a 20% increase on beans versus control that may have been due to less stress from the Japanese beetle damage. Um, and incidentally, on the compost extract group, we, we also believe that there was less insect damage uh, on the beans at, uh, during that growing season. We also ran some macro and micronutrient data on uh, the carrot aerial parts. It's, it's a bit of a specialty lab to get nutrient data on root crops um, or on produce. So carrots was a good choice for us, carrot aerial parts, uh, to try and get that nutrient data. And what you're looking at here, uh, just kind of from an overview perspective, you can see that if it's green, the darker the green is the higher percentage versus control for that nutrient. Uh, gold is also positive, whereas orange and red is negative. So we see a very significant increase in nutrient levels for phosphorus, potassium, and sulfur, but then still a significant increase for calcium, magnesium, zinc, boron, and boy, I, we don't know what's going on with molybdenum there. We, because this is a little confusing, we talked to the folks over at Ward Laboratories and they mentioned that it's well known that the use of compost tea uh, increases the soil biology. And although it's a complex system and there are lots of things going on, they believe that improving the soil biology then would make nutrients more available to plants for uptake. This is potentially a really significant uh, piece of information given the nutrient deficient state of so many Americans that using compost tea either at the home gardening level or um, vegetable crop growers uh, could be a way to increase the nutrients of the vegetables that are provided uh, for consumption. So an area for future research that could be very interesting is to try and understand which nutrients are most positively impacted, whether what we're seeing here is, uh, is normal, and then also whether some plants um, are more responsive than other types to these increases in nutrients through the use of compost tea or compost extract. So that's just a summary of the, of the trial. We saw benefits in terms of total yield and edit, edible yield uh, we can confirm that they were directional, but not whether they were statistically significant. We also saw an indication of higher nutrient uptake in the sample that we evaluated. Um, and finally, observationally, we saw some potential benefits in terms of pest resistance. We already mentioned about the Japanese beetle 
uh, on the bean plants, we also believe that there was a lower uh, impact on carrot, carrot rust fly on the carrots in the two trial arms versus control, but further work would be needed to verify that. So overall, we found this very interesting and uh, hope that it's beneficial uh, to you as well. Um, and we'll look forward to additional work in this area. Thanks for watching.